Okay, so I don't know how you all you can see me, but I've been asked by a couple people some things about these York compressors that you use for onboard air. Okay, here's a little bit about them. This one is actually a York 210. I don't know, you can't really see it, but right there, F210R. The R means right hand suction. And it's always when you're looking at the compressor from the front, this is the front, the clutch like that, that's the back of the clutch, goes right there. And you can tell that this is a 210 because this crankshaft doesn't have a chamfer, it doesn't have a notch cut in it, it just has a taper. So that means that it's a 210. Okay. And also, if you're wondering which side it is, it says right on the top, discharge and it has a big S right there for suction. Okay, now the question that I was asked was uh, about how these pass oil. Now, here's your head. Here is your valve plate. And here's where the pistons would be. Okay, if you can see down in here there's a hole right down in there right there okay that is an oil feed to the bearing from the suction side if you use that you if you use this as an air compressor you have to plug this you can either drill and tap it and put a set screw in right there or you can remove this cover and in this tube right here, which is the other end of that, you can put a screw up this way. I chose to do it this way because I did some other modifications to this compressor to make it work better for me in the process. So, that's what you have to do to, uh, this is known as the York Oil Mod. Now, they still do pass oil because these pistons, even though they are very nicely made, they're sand, they look like sand cast aluminum rods with uh, nice 12 point fasteners. They only have a single ring. So, I've actually run one of these without the head and valve plate on it. And they do pass oil through the cylinders, it's kind of inevitable. But the nice thing is they don't wear out because they're, I believe, to be sleeved. But I mean, this one has been used for a good long while. You really can't see, but there's still cross hatching in the cylinders. I just took it apart to show you how these work. Okay. Now, one thing that I did to this, if you will notice that the valve plate has a dowel pin there and there. And these dowel pins locate into the hole there and there. Now, one thing that I tried, because I wasn't too sure on this, was uh, I needed a unit that had a... I needed a union that was uh, left hand suction. As you can see, this is a right, as noted by the S. Okay, so what I did, and I tried this not knowing if it would work, but I looked, and what you'll notice is that side and that side, other than that little oil port right there, it even has the undrilled boss on the other side, are virtually the same. So what I did is this these dowel pins just come out. See? So, I took this valve plate and I spun it 180 degrees and then I spun this 180 degrees to make this a left hand suction unit. And I've been using a unit that is identical to this 
in my truck for probably about a year. I actually went to AutoZone and bought a rebuild kit for a AC compressor in a I think it was a 76 AMC Matador and uh, it does not come with the seal for the front or the back so it is just the base gasket and the two valve plate gaskets and a few o-rings which I didn't even use because the head that I'm using is a modified flange head so yeah those are two mods that you can do to these compressors to make them work better for air okay um, one other one that I did is uh, if you plan on having any kind like if you want air to stay in the system for any length of time you are going to need to put a jack valve on here it's uh, it's just one of those things that you have to do so you're gonna have to put a check valve on here and uh, one other thing that I did to prevent the seals from leaking oil on the case was I actually made this this is just a piece of hex and even though that looks kind of similar to eighth pipe thread it is not it is 5 16 fine thread as that bolt right there is where you put the oil in 5 16 fine thread so I made an ad I ha actually had an adapter made by my neighbor who has a way well had a lathe to go from 5 16 national fine to 8th NPT I'm not using this I have to put it back on but I have to devise a way because even though I have this on here this has no baffle so I need to figure out a way to baffle this to uh, keep oil from coming up this tube because I had this hooked to a bottle and the crankcase oil will literally blow out from the from it running so I need to figure out a way to put a splash guard down here I think what I'm going to do is uh, remake this so instead of having a hole straight out it will have a hole in from each side and this will be flat therefore baffling some of it one would hope so those are the mods that I've done to run this um, and for those of you looking to mount one of these in a truck they have mounting on this side that side and the bottom and the pattern for all three is the same they use 3 8 coarse bolts to hold them on but the company recommends that you use this side or this side for primary mounting and use the bottom only for secondary mounting which is what I have done on what I have used with this old bracket that's right there that rusty piece of crap so yeah something to keep in mind if you ever decide to do one of these and uh, these things I've heard of them coming in vehicles like 70s and 80s Fords as a dealer AC option and some factory options they came in Volvos, Ferraris, AMC's GM didn't use them because they had their own. Some Chrysler products use them. Uh, some Ford products use a Ford branded compressor, but it's virtually the same thing, and they'll use the same clutches. Like this one I actually got from AutoZone, and it's for a 87 Jeep Grand Wagoneer, which is actually probably going to be one of the vehicles that you might be able to junkyard pick one of these compressors from so just something to keep in mind there but that's about all I have to explain these goodbye